Hey there, it's Gary from Coffee Fusion and we are going to learn the basics of latte art with a step-by-step -step beginner's guide. First time around, I recommend watching this video start to finish, but I've also divided the video up into sections so that you can watch back the parts that you have a bit of trouble with after you've practiced some pours yourself. Let's get started. Now before we talk about the actual pouring techniques, we need to cover some basics to make sure you're pouring with good milk and have a great espresso base. So to get a great espresso base, it's best to be working with freshly roasted coffee, ideally between about 7 and 30 days old. And to dial in a good shot, a good starting point is 20 grams in, 40 grams out in 26 to 32 seconds. Now if this doesn't mean too much for you, I'll share an espresso video at the end to help you out. And if you need some freshly roasted coffee, I definitely recommend my blend Keyboard Warrior. It's great for latte art. So next to get that great milk for latte art, it's best to have a steam one with high steam pressure. That pressure will allow you to get your whirlpool going really early and mix the air you're adding into the milk. Now in terms of that frothy milk, you need to get enough air into the jug to see the volume of the milk increase by one centimeter per coffee you're making. More than this and your milk will be too frothy to pour most latte art and less than this and you'll find it really hard to set the crema to pour something on top. Now for the sake of getting into pouring as soon as possible, I'm gonna leave it at that for espresso and milk. However, latte art can be really difficult if you haven't mastered those two steps. So if you're still having trouble with your espresso and your milk, I'll add some video suggestions at the end of the video for you to check out some more in-depth learning on those two topics. So next up, the jug you use actually plays a fairly important role in your ability to pour consistently good latte art. The jug needs to have a little bit of a lip on it to aid the way that the milk pours into the cup. A fatter spout like this one here can make your hearts and tulips easier, whereas a sharper spout can make those fine lines easier. Now when it comes to your cup, it's much easier to pour into a cup with a wide surface area on the top. If you're pouring into something tall and skinny like a glass, it makes it a little bit trickier to get your spout in the right position. For the last few years at home, I've been using Loveramics cups and I really love them. Part of the pun. Okay, so let's assume we've got perfectly textured milk and great espresso. Time to pour. Firstly, you want to give that espresso in your cup a little swirl. It just makes sure that the crema isn't stiff. Give your milk jug a knock and a swirl to make sure the milk looks like wet paint and to make sure your frothy milk hasn't separated out. With all latte art, the first thing we want to do when we're pouring is set the crema. So this means we have a nice brown surface on top of the coffee that we can pour our art onto. If you don't do this, your pattern will end up being washed out and there won't be a nice contrast between the crema and the pattern. So to set the crema, we pour from a slight height. So you make sure your jug is about five centimeters above the espresso shot. Now you want to pour into the center of the espresso so that it doesn't splash around in the cup. If you see any white appear on top, you can pour over the top of it from a height to push it below the surface. Now you want to continue pouring in this way until the cup is about three quarters full. So the most crucial part of this next step is to make sure your jug spout moves close into the crema. If your spout doesn't move close enough, you can wiggle, push, pray, all you like, nothing will appear, okay? So the spout needs to be within about half a centimeter of the crema, and then you'll see that white start to appear. Now, if you're just learning for the first time, for your first attempt, move the spout close to the crema until that white appears, and then just keep it sitting there and pour your cup all the way to the top and create a blob like this. So once you've got this process down, you're ready to experiment with different jug movements. First of all, we're gonna make some slight changes to that blob and turn it into a heart. So we're gonna set the crema as normal and this time push your bulb into the center of the cup. And once your cup is almost full, we're gonna lift up and pull through. So as you can see, this pulls down the top of the bulb and elongates the bottom of the bulb and you end up with a simple heart in your cup. Well done. So the next thing we're gonna try is very similar, but we're just going to push multiple bulbs into the cup to create a tulip. So you're gonna set your crema as normal and then push your first bulb into the center of the cup, stop your pour and move back up to the top of the cup and push in a second bulb into the first bulb. If you get it right, you'll notice the first bulb will thin out and start to wrap around the second bulb. So to finish the tulip, we're just gonna repeat this process bulb after bulb until the cup is almost full. And then we're gonna lift up and pull through to complete the pattern. So the last technique we're gonna to learn today is wiggling to create a rosetta or leaf pattern. So this pattern uses a gentle rock side to side in order to create a ripple effect in the cup, which we can then use to create fine lines. 
So again, for this one, we set the crema as normal and then move your jug spout close to the crema. Now, once that white milk starts to appear in the cup, we're gently gonna rock the jug side to side to create the lines. As the pattern wraps around on itself, we're gonna start moving the jug towards the back of the cup, making sure that you keep that wiggling consistent as you do. And again, as that cup fills, we're gonna lift up and pull through to create that Rosetta pour. So with these techniques and a bit of practice on your part, you're gonna start pouring some basic designs. And from here, more advanced designs are usually just a combination of those techniques that you've already learned to create more elaborate latte art. Now, if this video here is the beginning of your latte art journey, I definitely recommend you click subscribe. I've been doing Coffee Fusion on YouTube for about a decade, and I now have a coffee roastery for Coffee Fusion as well. And this channel has always been here to help you on your coffee journey. Right now, I'm only shipping my coffee within Australia, but if you are within Australia, you can check out my coffee beans by signing up to the subscription, and I do a free sample pack. I'll add a link in the description if you want to check it out. There's also going to be a link in the description to my latte art blog posts if you need more latte art guides. And hey, if you are new to coffee, just enjoy the journey. It's so much fun. I love coffee so much. I'll put up some videos now on espresso and milk texturing to help you out. Keep frothing!